on the ground. My name is Gary Files and I'm the director of the Keeled Observatory in Northumberland, the United Kingdom. And I've came here to sunny California, to Pasadena, for Space Fest 2014. And the reason I've came here is because some of the most important people in the history of space exploration have gathered here, including men who walked on the moon. Born in 1936 in Camden, New Jersey, Cy Liebergott is a retired NASA flight controller who served during the Apollo program. Liebergott was the lead EECOM flight controller throughout all Apollo manned missions and was responsible for the electrical and environmental systems on board the command module. In 1970, he was a key part of the team that safely guided Apollo 13 and the crew back to the Earth following the explosion which crippled the spacecraft. My name is Cy Liebergott and uh, <clears throat> I spent uh, uh, my whole career, work career, uh, working in our space program here in the United States, uh, specifically as an Apollo uh, flight controller, Apollo ECOM we called it. And uh, some people call it a highlight, it's not a highlight for me, but. I happened to be sitting at my console when the oxygen tank blew up on Apollo 13 and it ended up in my lap and I had to deal with that. So that was uh, probably the most stressful time in my career. We didn't have a good feel for uh, the history we were making because we were doing our job that we were trained for and of course everybody will give you those cliched statements, I was just doing my job. Well the job turned out to be one of the most exciting jobs you could have ever had. And, in retrospect, kind of look over your shoulder and he says, boy, we do all that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing that's ingrained in the public's mind is, of course, Apollo 13. Oh, yeah. How did that feel, Si, to be involved in such, a, such an incredible series of events? Apollo 13, you know, happened on the last hour of my eight-hour shift, work shift. <laughs> that's why one of, my, uh, one of my talks I call the longest hour. <laughs> and it was the longest hour. It, you know, I got to tell you, Time seems to dilate when you're in a high, high stress situation like that, and you're not conscious of the passage of time. So probably that's good, because that means you can deal with the, the problem at hand and not be concerned about time. First thing was to ad admit that we had a problem, and what was the nature of the problem? What can I do to alleviate the problem? It's all part of our training. And can I find the source of the problem? All of which I was, the answer was no, really. I, we could not locate the source of the problem because it was just unbelievable that we would blow a tank of oxygen up and it would blow off the side of the spacecraft and uh, send the uh, spacecraft into wild gyrations and, and there was uh, alarms sounding on board. It was really an unbelievable time. But once I realized that it was real and I settled down, probably within 20 minutes, to, to, to try to deal with it. The problem was that I really didn't believe that we could not solve the problem, nor could my flight director, Gene Kranz. And that's when I get to the point and I say, you know, we both realize that denial is not just a river in Egypt, because <laughs> we were both in denial. And once we realized that, we, we fell to. I made sure the flight director knew how much we had lost and we weren't landing on the moon, that was for sure. How long did it actually take before you realized they weren't going to go to the moon? Probably 20 minutes I, I, when I realized we had a real problem. You know, we lost tank, oxygen tank number two, which cracked the line in oxygen tank number one, and now we had an hour and 54 minutes before the crew was going to be dead. And we, had, we hadn't even turned on the lunar module yet. So it, it was a highly stressed time, but we got through it because... You know, at one point, Cran says, let's just settle down and don't make things worse by guessing. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached, the limb spacecraft's good, so if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. So we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. He had such a command figure uh, that he, he, he could calm everybody down. and. Uh, and he left me alone because he knew I was—he <laughs> knew I was working the problem. 
And uh, it, was, it was very difficult. You know, I, I tell people, you know, when you get into a panic situation, uh, uh, panic comes up as a, as a gorge in your throat. And it's up to you to succumb to it or shove it back down. And, uh, uh, you, you know, I hate that old cliche saying, it said, well, my training kicked in. And uh, that's not what kicks in. What kicks in is nothing. You just adopt your training. And your training consists of, consisted of, uh, of, of calm and working the problem, being very logical and calm about it, and using your, all the resources you had at hand, like your backroom uh, specialist. And it, uh, it, you know, it didn't make any difference. We just, we just uh, couldn't fix it. If there was any sort of message, side that you could give to the next generation of scientists, the next generation of space explorers, what would that be? What, what have we learned from the Apollo program? Well, uh, what we learned from the Apollo program is what I show, and I, I do a motivational speech to mid-schoolers, and I give them a little a flavor of Apollo 13 to show how incredible that was. And then I, I, I put up a bunch of slides to, to tell them how to live their lives. You know, like, like set short-term goals, then long-term goals. But the main thing I, I give them, and this is apropos of what we're talking about, what is, <clears throat> the final slide is, it says the can't word. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't, which I was subjected to most of my life. Once you adopt the fact that you can do something in your life, then adopt it. And if we adopted uh, that for our all of our space endeavors to ignore the can't word, the naysayers. Uh, what did that one vice president of ours say? The nattering nabobs of negativism. Ignore those people. And remember, uh, we were young and, you know, we were fearless at the time. And I mean, after all, nobody, as I say in my talks, nobody had ever told us young engineers that we couldn't successfully land uh, uh, humans on another planet. They would now. They would always point out there's got to be something go wrong and risk taking is risk taking and you you eliminate the risk as best you can and go for it